2 o'clock, I think we're going to get started. We're going to have uh, probably three or four others uh, coming in. So uh, later this afternoon, 4 o'clock, we got a vote scheduled um, to where, uh, I'm sure you know, the House passed the uh, same resolution last night in a bipartisan fashion. Uh, we uh, will have that vote later today, and it ought to be extremely bipartisan in the sense that, think about it, all of us save for retirement. And all of us would expect that when you work that hard and you save, that there would be one criterion that would trump everything, that would be the primary and no other. If it's coincidental that something else kind of comes along with it, well, may the best return win. But when you are allowed to actually start allocating uh, f these retirement funds into certain investment vehicles where it's pushing a political agenda, that is government in overdrive. And uh, to, to just give you an idea, they've tracked this to see, and this was Bloomberg that did it, if you did take that preference, it would have given you a 6.3% return as opposed to an 8.9% return. I've been known to ask quizzes on math here before, like what 1% of 30 trillion and uh, what 4% of 30 trillion would be. You'll understand that 6.3 versus 8.9, that's roughly a 30% lower return by pushing a political agenda as you invest funds. We got a lot of folks here that are gonna weigh in on it today. Here's the magnitude of the issue. 152 million investors through 401k plans. 11.7 trillion dollars. That is a lot of money. That is the accumulation of a lot of hard work. And the only criterion should be what gives you the best math, the best return on investment. We're going to have several talking about it today. Uh, Senator Thune, I think you're uh, on deck here. I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Mike, and thanks for your leadership on this. Um, <clears throat> in an effort for, by, by the administration to uh, further their environmental goals, they have created this ESG, Environmental, Social, and Governance Agenda, which is designed to limit capital investment into industries that the Democrats don't like, and namely, Oil and, oil and gas, conventional energy, but it, other areas as well of the economy. And so this latest effort would extend that uh, approach to literally the retirement savings of hundreds of millions of, or tens of millions of Americans. And um, <clears throat> I think it's a huge, as Mike pointed out, a huge, uh, horrible, devastating impact on the retirement savings of 152 million Americans who are invested in 401ks and essentially the way this would work is that uh, investment advisors would uh, be allowed to invest in ESG priorities without the consent of individuals who whose money is being invested even if it would lead to a lower return or carry higher risk. Uh, that is a, a huge change, a sea change when it comes to how investment funds are managed in this country. And people in this country are already experiencing um, the impact of Democrat policies, whether that's higher inflation, uh, whether that's uh, higher taxes, higher interest rates, uh, a rocky economy. The, the one thing we shouldn't be doing now is piling on yet another uh, burden on Americans whose investment savings could be uh, tremendously adversely impacted by this uh, really ill-advised uh, Department of Labor rule which uh, the Braun resolution gets at. So this afternoon, we're going to vote. Uh, people are going to go on the record as to whether or not they want to impair and undermine the, the savings, the retirement, literally, of uh, millions and millions of Americans. And uh, we're going to find out whether or not there are any Democrats who agree with us that we ought to stop this initiative in its tracks, because this bears directly on the economic uh, well-being and vitality of uh, retirees and people today who are saving retirement all across this country. Senator Scott. 
<clears throat> so the Biden administration is, this is just a given to the radical left. Um, you would think about it, they, they are giving away the basic rights of American citizens to give more power to the radical left. If you put money into a retirement plan, you expect to get the best return you can get. You expect the whoever's running it is a fiduciary to get the best return possible. What the Biden administration is saying is, no, you don't have to do that. You don't have to have a fiduciary to get the best return. You can say, if you have some social agenda, you can go focus on your social agenda. Now, everybody that, if you want to make those investments on your own, have at it. If you want to go make an investment, say you don't want to invest in something, have at it. But when you have, when you're giving your money to a fiduciary, your expectation is that fiduciary acts in your best interest. This will not necessarily be in your best interest. And as you heard uh, from Senator Brown, Braun, that he said that you don't get the same return if you make these social investments rather than economic investments. So this is going to put American citizens at risk. Their investments are going to be at risk. They'll get lower returns going forward. But again, this is the Biden administration kowtowing to the radical left instead of worrying about the American public and making sure they get a return on their investment dollars. Senator Ricketts. Thank you. What this boils down to is the Biden administration is putting politics above workers' retirements and what kind of quality of life they're going to have in retirement. This could mean two-thirds of workers' retirements are going to be put into investments that they don't want to have without their consent. And what's that going to mean? Well, we already heard these ESG funds have higher fees, lower returns. That means less money in retirement. Nebraskans don't deserve that. Americans don't deserve that. What we deserve is to have the ability to retire to the quality of life that we want. If this goes into place, if this is not revoked, this rule, that means that grandparents, for example, are going to have a hard time seeing their grandkids. It's going to impact people's quality of life. Families will have less, less flexibility. So this is important, an important vote here today to say, hey, look, we got to make sure that when people are investing for retirement, they are going to have the best opportunity to have the quality of life they want in retirement. And following this woke political agenda is not going to accomplish that. Senator Wallace. Thank you. Uh, I'm very proud of you, Senator Braun, for bringing this forward and encouraging all of us to recognize the impacts this has on every American who works hard and saves for retirement. And that's a lot of widows. And I'm a widow and I get how scary it is to get to this point in your life and be alone to manage the rest of your life, to have enough money to live the rest of your life. It is investment malpractice, pure and simple, to depart from the fiduciary responsibility when you're investing other people's money. So for the Labor Department of all people to thwart the ability of people who have labored all their lives to save enough money to retire on by forcing an agenda on them that they may not even agree with or know about is investment malpractice. This ESG agenda, when applied to investing, is investment malpractice, pure and simple. So I'm very proud of Senator Braun, and I urge others uh, to support this bill. This should be a massively favorable vote in favor of working people who saved for their retirement. Thank you, Senator. Um, we've got a couple others that may come in to weigh in on it, but until they get here, uh, you got any questions, you can throw them at us. Go ahead. I don't. I didn't get any personally uh, because I think it's a hard thing that they could push back on. I mean, they're in the business of giving you the best return. In fact, I think there have been some funds that have already said they're not going to pursue that route uh, that the Biden rule would allow. So, I think you're going to find folks starting to differentiate. Remember, this is fiduciary. Uh, most of us would just trust that that would happen, and I think. Uh, the rule, if it passes today, it'll go to Biden's desk. And then he'll have to say, well, it's uh, come to him on a bipartisan way. If he vetoes it, um, 
then that is his political consequence, and I think he'll have to explain that. But I think investment companies will start differentiating themselves by probably voluntarily saying, you know, while the rule would, rule would be in place, because just like in that vaccine mandate issue I talked about, a court had to enter into it to finally get rid of a bad rule. And I'm guessing that this would end up in the court system as well. It doesn't make the administration any difference, though. They generally push the envelope and tempt, you know, some type of court proceeding. This is our way to say enough is enough. Senator, yes. You just touched on this. The president has already said he's going to veto this. Um, so what do you hope to achieve by having a vote today if it's not going to get passed? So in the game, this game we're in here, uh, every time you can reinforce it in some fashion, I think if you're bucking it, you either, either really ought to have the merits of the case on your side to where you could say, hey, they're wrong. Uh, he not only, I think, is going to have to buck both chambers of commerce in a bipartisan way, he then, you know, is most likely going to have to deal with something that gets into the courts. Sooner or later, you ought to quit going down a trail that's pushing the envelope politically to where that would happen. Before any other questions, uh, Senator Schmidt, you can... Uh, Thank you, Senator. Um, and thank you for your leadership on this. I can tell you as, as AG in my previous role, we launched an investigation into the Net Zero Banking Alliance. This is pretty insidious, the reach of this ESG movement. And this sort of woke investing does a couple of things. First, it puts the pensions and the retirement savings at risk for older Americans who deserve to make sure those fiduciaries act in a fiduciary, fiduciary responsibly way of getting the best return, not checking a box uh, to say that you're virtue signaling. That's very important. The second piece of it, which I don't think it's talked about enough, is it also would allow uh, some of the biggest financial institutions on the planet to deny credit-worthy applicants the ability to have diesel trucks on their farms. Light manufacturing, manufacturing, as we talk about trying to bring these supply chains home, this works against that. So I think this is really important. I'm glad you've taken the lead. Thank you. Senator Barrasso. Well, th thanks so much, Senator Braun, for your leadership on this. We're all up here because we want to protect the retirement savings of American families. That's why we're here. And just uh, Monday, Joe Biden, President of the United States, threatened to veto our efforts. We're trying to protect retirement funds for people. He's threatening to veto our efforts. In a sense, he is basically thumbing his nose at hardworking American families who want to invest to maximize their returns for their retirement. He is so committed, the president is, to his climate change approach to things and his pipe dream that he's willing to crush the American dreams of families who want to invest for the future. You say, how does this happen? Well, we have these woke and weaponized bureaucrats at the Department of Labor, and they've come out with uh, regulations at the end of last year that have to do with retirement accounts. And they want you to invest your retirement money in far left liberal causes. It's called ESG, environmental, social, uh, and uh, governance. That means you can't invest in American energy like oil and gas and coal, and you're gonna suffer a result in the returns. You take a look at what the Bloomberg analysts did, and they come up, they looked at these ESG investments, and they said, hey, they significantly underperform the market. Does the regular market as a whole underperform? Which means over many, many years, you're going to underperform more and more and more as a result of the compounding benefits that one gets if one does well. Oh, and the Bloomberg analyst also said the expense of running one of these programs is actually higher than just the regular investments in the market. So you're going to less return, higher investment costs. It is a bad deal, but the government wants to force people to do it. The only people that are actually trying to protect America's retirement are the Republicans, in spite of Joe Biden telling lies about what's going to happen with people's retirement funds. So here we are in the middle of this. The House voted, and they voted to pass this. We're going to pass it today in the Senate, likely along bipartisan lines to show how far out of line this administration is. We're going to stop Joe Biden from strangling America's retirement money. People deserve better and more freedom than this command and control that we're seeing coming from this administration. Thank you. A quick question in terms of this 
vote today. How many Democrats who anticipate will actually sign on? I know you already have financial investor and looks like they're voting yes. And why do you think that is? And then the House with one Democrat support this as well. I think that, uh, of course, it always comes down to probably a political calculation uh, when you do this. And I think they're risking, especially in states that are going to appreciate the merits of the case, that uh, you'd have to do it. Why there aren't more? I think then that gets down to kind of the moral hazard issue. <laughs> Why aren't they there taking the simple case that, hey, if you can generate returns that are way above the norm, uh, regardless of what you're pushing, you know, that's fine. Here, you're forcing it into where you're uh, going to encourage folks to do it, to follow a political agenda. And I think that is, you know, full of pitfalls in terms of how you'd explain that politically. Uh, I've had talked to one senator, I won't mention whose name, that said, well, it'd be, did it on something else, and it was a small percentage. Here, it's like a 30 percent difference when you take the difference between 8.9 and 6.3. I, and I think it's also emblematic of what they will do to push the political enterprise when they can't get it done legislatively, that they're willing to do it through an agency. And I think people are going to get fed up with that as well. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? There'll be, there'll be some dims for this. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Um, how do you reconcile this with sort of free market ideas in the sense that, you know, if, if ideology is a consideration, theoretically it doesn't have to just be ESG, right? It could be conservative ideology, um, conservative causes, also conservative investment. Can you just talk to me a little bit about how that fits into a free market? So if the rate of return is going to be inherently lower, you're mixing ideology with the central purpose, the charter the trust, the fiduciary responsibility that if it were clearly spelled out, um, you think they're going to say, hey, uh, I project that I'm going to get a 30 percent lower return when I do this if they were using the only data that we've got accumulated. Over the long run, that's a different case. But I think here uh, the essence of what a fiduciary is and what that responsibility is for them to do, it doesn't violate the free market principle. And if you ever get something that's really giving you a heck of a return, it's associated with an ideological point of view, uh, the merits of the case would be the better return, not the ideology. So you don't think that an investor would choose maybe make less money but feel more like, conscientious about it? I don't think so. Uh, Senator Cassidy. Thank you. First, I want to thank Senator Braun for putting this up. He shows a lot more concern for the retirement savings for the average American worker than does the administration. And there's a certain irony here, since they always bill themselves as actually caring about the person who's struggling. People are going to struggle more because of this rule. And so we'll have a vote on this policy. And keep in mind, there's 152 million Americans potentially affected by this. Potentially will have a poor retirement because of this rule. This ESG rule that only pursues an ideological agenda of the left, it does not pursue optimal returns for the American looking at their retirement. Now, for Louisiana energy workers, I'm particularly concerned about them, of course. I, I have the privilege of representing them. This weaponizes their retirement accounts against both their future but also their present. It would say for those of you who are out there producing the natural gas, the natural gas that not only fuels our economy but is helping Europeans push off Russia's kind of economic blackmail. Your Louisiana workers who are producing the natural gas that has helped our country lower its emissions in absolute amounts to less than 2005? Oh, you Louisiana worker, we're going to take your retirement funds, we're going to weaponize it, and we are going to work against your livelihood. Not just your retirement, not just your future, but your present, your now, the job you're holding. The, the responsibility of an asset manager should be maximizing returns, period, full stop. Because her goal, his goal, should be that the retirement of the American who places their trust in them would be to optimize that retirement. And I will repeat, 
not to pursue an ideological and ideological agenda that not only hurts their future, but hurts their present. Thank you. Yes. I just was wondering um, how common this tool using the Congressional Review Act, uh, you know, the if, if you, if there are other Biden administration regulations you can start with, it. Well, in the current dynamic uh, of our Congress, I think it's going to be used uh, often because they're going to give the fodder, the fuel to do it. Uh, this is all based on stuff that doesn't make sense. And it's also based upon an administration that has basically said, give up on getting it done legislatively. We're just going to ram it through administratively. They've been clear that they're, you know, okay with doing that. So I think that uh, here, uh, you know, it's already mustered bipartisan support. I don't know that everything will, but uh, this has. Are there, are there yeah. I mean, they're going to be, I, I'm sh sure there's going to be a repeat of this based on the merits of the case. There, there, let me say, there are more, there are more uh, coming, and, and one of the reasons for that is just the excessive weight of the regulatory state on our economy. I mean, this administration, uh, if you talk to anybody in the stakeholder community, in the regulated community, it's a, it's a daily basis. They are uh, just being pounded with more regulations. And in many in case like what, what Mike's trying to do with this uh, would be incredibly detrimental to literally millions of Americans. And that's going to be true on some of the other uh, CRA votes that will come up in the future. There are other regulations that are also going to be targeted for this very reason. And I think you'll find on some of those, just like you will today, there will be some Democrats who will vote for it. Um, because they recognize that um, the, the adverse and detrimental impact this is having on ordinary Americans. <clears throat> As ranking member of the Energy Committee, so a regulation that's not yet out, would you take a look at some of the documents that this administration has been working on relating to gas stoves, gas appliances, the use of natural gas in this country? Hugely unpopular what the administration is proposing. So we're going to be very closely watching for and looking at when they come out with those regulations. And we would expect that we would use the Congressional Review Act to attack the administration's attack on America's freedom and make decisions on their own. Yes. Do you think the use of CRA will increase if this passes today? It seems likely. I think it's going to depend on how forceful the Biden administration is going to be in trying to get things done administratively where they're pushing the envelope and I would say sooner or later they'd get the cue to maybe back off and this is in the context too which hasn't been mentioned we've still got inflation that is uh, being litigated as to how long and when and that was caused by the fiscal dump you know that they made in the last two years and the Fed accommodating it and the other economic issues like uh, two percent under the normal uh, kind of labor utilization rate, a lot of stuff that's been a function of their policies that did get legislated and look at the result. And that, with all of this on top of it, I think there's going to be a big political burden to make uh, that's on their shoulders to make the American public, why does this make sense, just back off. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't investors be better off? Plan managers could decide whether to invest according to ESG considerations or not, depending on which investments brings the best return. They'd have to do it based upon a proven uh, return that's going to exceed the norm. And if you're doing it out of the gate, I think that's a disservice to the people that would never expect that. So, yeah, go ahead. There's academic literature which shows that the prejudice of the plan manager is reflected in their portfolio. So we have to recognize these are human beings. But there's also a little bit of a sugar high. If somebody goes out there and makes an ESG statement, they get a temporary bump in their stock. But I think it's called a non-pecuniary, I've, I've got a son who studies this, That's, uh, I slept in a Holiday Inn last night, a, <laughs> a, a non-pecuniary factor in the price of a stock. I should be asking Ricketts. Um, and so that non-pecuniary factor is not the underlying strength, and long term, it does not give you a return. But if you have a restriction, you can only put it there. Of course, you get a sugar high. You get a little bit of a bump. But for the person who's going to be retiring in 10 years, that bump's long gone. 
and their accumulated decreased return because of that malinvestment mm -hmm. pays off with the diminished retirement. I, I wanted to ask this point of information. If you have a plan manager who determines that making an investment with ESG considerations as part of the calculation is the best investment, that, that's, that that will yield the best return, does this resolution prevent that management from investing? So and it also begged the question, uh, well, if the, if the uh, plan manager did that, uh, you could get rid of them if you didn't like it in terms of taking your funds elsewhere. Uh, this just simply says that the primary criterion has to be the financial return on investment. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing that out of the gate, uh, if you're not taking that as the underlying purpose, you shouldn't be able to, on the come, push something that has an ideological bent to where you have no idea whether it's going to pan out financially. I think that's what this does. Yes. Wotus. Yeah. Wotus, by the way, if you come from a rural state, that thing has been flip-flopped around since 2015, and that impacts agriculture, which is the hardest job out there with all the other uncertainties of it. And uh, Wotus now looks like it's going to be retooled and implemented in a way that will make it more difficult for farmers and small developers. So there are a host of them. I look at them in my office as they come along. If it looks like it's egregious, we're going to jump on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.